Hey everybody, it's Jeff. Welcome to another episode of Stay Rad Wine Blog TV. If you like wines with rip-roaring acidity, if you like wines that, that make your mouth do things, and by things I mean just building up a whole lot of saliva so you can just dive into a whole lot of food. If you want wines that make your mouth water, just by talking about it, I think this is the episode for you. Uh, the folks from Wines of All Sauce, uh, today, Thursday the 27th from 4 to 5 on Twitter, uh, they're hosting a taste and chat. Uh, about a week ago, they sent me four different Alsatian Rieslings uh, to taste and to chat and to talk to you guys about. And my hair is just doing awesome things. We're just going to let it happen, right? Um, so they sent me four different Rieslings. Three of them are from the 2011 vintage. One of them is uh, 2010. They're all from the Alsace region of France. So we're talking about we're talking about eastern France, right along the border, the northern border between uh, France and Germany. And uh, this is where you're going to find just some really awesome, uh, just awesome dry Rieslings, some of the best on the planet. So if you like Riesling, uh, I think you're going to be pretty stoked on this. Um, it's a lot of wine today, so let's just, I got my spit cup and everything. Uh, we're just going to dive right into it. The first one that I'm really excited to get in uh, to with you guys is the Trimbach 2010 uh, Alsatian Riesling. The reason why I'm excited about this is because uh, if you go back uh, on to Stay Rad, and I'll put a link below, from 2011 I had posted or I had tasted the uh, 2008 Trimbach Riesling and it really did change my life in the sense that this is how I look at Rieslings now and how awesome it can be because I, I know for some of us, you know, Riesling is not an unheard of grape. A lot of times we think of them as being very, very sweet and very, very candy-like because that's the way uh, a lot of folks make it uh, in the United States. That's the way that a lot of folks uh, make it in Germany, and they make some amazing uh, sweet Rieslings in Germany. But I'll, I'll tell you what, uh, Alsace really is the place to go if you want to try Riesling in a different style and, and dare I say, a more uh, refined uh, type of style than what a lot of us are really used to. So again, the 2010 uh, Trimbach Alsatian Riesling. This family, they're going on 12, 13 generations um, of, of families uh, running this estate. So dating back to the 1620s is when they got started. They've got a little bit of a history here. Now, uh, color-wise, with a lot of these, you're going to see the same type of thing. It's like a golden straw yellow right there. Uh, this guy in particular was aged in stainless steel and concrete vats. So we're not getting any oak influence at all. 13% alcohol, 2.7 seven grams per liter of residual sugar. Now, when you think about residual sugar, we start thinking about sweetness, but these guys are just so high on the acid level, you don't really notice that sugar at all, and, and, and that's where it gets kind of exciting. Um, these tend to be very aromatic wines, and again, just acid, um, uh, acid and, and, and saliva-producing wines, right? So on the nose, I'm getting this really nice um, honeysuckle uh, type of nose. Just really good crushed rock minerality. And there is a little bit of like a cut grass type of thing. So I mean, not uh, on the level of like a Sauvignon Blanc, but I mean, it's definitely some notes of uh, grassiness there. A little bit of green apple skin too. Yeah. On the palate. Just gonna let this go for a while. 
the acid is so intense um, on this wine. Again, as I'm talking to you right now, um, my whole mouth is just kind of puckering up a little bit. Um, this is definitely a wine that you would uh, would go great with, um, you know, light pasta dishes. Uh, I'm also thinking of like a a really thin uh, wood fired pizza with like uh, like pear gorgonzola. I think that would be really nice. And, and this acid is just continuing to play. And 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 this is what's really nice. This is a wine um, with some real length to it. Um, you know, a lot of folks, you know, judge wines just on the finish. And I, I, I like to kind of look at everything, but if you're just somebody who's looking for a really long finish on a wine, this, this is all you need right here. Um, let's go back and we'll pick out some of these flavors now, but I mean, the acid, of course, above anything else is just so intense up front. Um, what I did notice too, and, and I'm looking for it again, is uh, when the wine originally passes through my lips, you do get just a hint of that residual sugar before that acid takes over. There's that sour note um, that I've been looking at a lot that my buddy Dave was kind of tipping me to um, that we're really getting here like a, a, a sour green apple, um, really just like nice crushed like pulp uh, of a green apple. Um, and it's really just, a, this is a fun fun wine. The, the fruit is definitely there. Um, I, I'm thinking like just a really nice, like crisp, think of about like the filling of an apple pie. If it were not overpoweringly sweet, I mean, those are the types of, of flavors that I'm really getting there. Just these like core, um, type of sensibilities and a little bit of like, a um, like, a like a, a peach, core type of flavor too. I mean, this is very nice. Um, score on this, I'm going to put it at like a, I'm going to put it at a 90 right now. I, I feel like I may have to adjust my scores a little bit as I taste through these guys. Right now I'm putting it at a 90. I mean, this is an excellent wine and, and, um, you know, running in like the 18 to $20 range, um, really nice wine, uh, to look at for just an introduction to, uh, what Alsatian Rieslings can bring. Let's dive into this next wine now. So, uh, we're going to go with, uh, this guy right here. All right. So this is the 2011 Domain Ostertag uh, Riesling Vinoble Dei 2011, right? And that Trimbach, that was the only 2010. The rest of these are going to be these 2011s right here. So color-wise, a lot of that same thing. I'd say it's a little bit more gold uh, when we are looking at this uh, Ostertag uh, Alsatian Riesling. I will say that this has a higher uh, residual sugar level. This is coming in at 7.4 grams per liter and 13% uh, alcohol. Uh, this is running at uh, about $24 at your local retailer. And this is imported by uh, Kermit Lynch. So if you're a fan of uh, a lot of the wines that he brings into the U.S., I, th I think that's a nice place to start. Big Kermit Lynch guy, and, and two of these wines are Kermit Lynch. So this one, uh, although it does have some of that uh, green apple, uh, I'm also getting a whole lot, again, of like this um, peachy nectarine uh, type of flavor. More, more in the peach realm, the, the peach skin uh, type of aroma. I'm getting a little bit of lemon lime right here. And then also, there's like a, like the aroma of freshly crushed walnuts. Uh, so it's a nice, just kind of a different uh, type of play. Wasn't expecting the walnuts there. And then there's also, 
What's coming to mind, and, and this is going to throw some of you guys off, you're going to think this is a bad thing. I'm almost getting like um, like a cardboard box, and not in like that, hey, this wine is bad, this wine is corked type of off type of thing. That's why I was kind of afraid to say this. Um, it's not like that wet cardboard. It's just like, you know, you open up, uh, gosh, maybe you open up a shipment of wine, you open up that cardboard, and that first uh, aroma that you get, there, there's a little bit of that mixed in with those crushed walnuts. So you just opened up a cardboard box with crushed walnuts and uh, a bunch of peach skin, dried peach skin. That's kind of what we're looking at here. On the palate. Quite a bit more of that residual sugar showing up initially. Um, and then that acid, that's really nice, um, balanced yet taking over uh, aspect of the acid on this one is really mellowing that sugar out. I mean, again, when we look at these Rieslings, it's definitely a, a drier type of style. Uh, there's these really nice uh, petrol uh, type of flavors to this as this finish is still uh, going on in my mouth here. I'm definitely getting, again, those, these fruits of these like peach skins. And then it is like there's this nutty uh, characteristic here. Wow. And what's really nice in this, with a lot of these Rieslings, um, most all of them are uh, organic or biodynamically farmed. Most all of the ones that I'm tasting today um, are also being fermented on their native yeasts. So there's very much this like minimalistic uh, type of style that we're looking at. Um, this guy right here was stayed, aged in stainless steel uh, for one year. It was done on its uh, wild yeast. And uh, it is organic and biodynamic viticulture, depending on the, the different vineyards that, that they sourced from uh, for this one. This is a really, really, um, really nice reasoning. Again, not as, as crazy dry as that Trimbach, um, but I would definitely say that this is quite a bit more um, complex than the Trimbach. Um, the acid isn't uh, so over the top that that's the only thing you're gonna be talking about for the next minute. Um, but it definitely does its job of livening up uh, all these different flavors. And again, I'm getting that peachiness, I'm getting this, this nuttiness. Um, and it's definitely uh, a Riesling that's making me think. I mean, I mean, all these Rieslings are really going to give you some, some fun stuff to play with. And again, at $24, another wine that, that uh, I would recommend to you, spending a couple extra bucks on this and just seeing a slightly different style um, out of this dry Alsatian Riesling. I'll give it one more taste. I am getting just a little bit of that green apple in there as well. Um, and there is this really nice, like, um, saltiness, this salinity um, to its minerality. And again, it's just really pleasant and uh, really fun uh, to get into. Let's try this next one. I mean, this is, this is kind of fun, huh? Let's look at this next guy here. So this is the Meyer Fauné uh, Vin d'Alsace Riesling Reserve 2011. Let me get out. I got a couple facts on this guy. So this is running in at uh, $22. Uh, for these last two, I didn't have the... Um, I couldn't find how much residual sugar was in there. My goal was 
going to go from the to be to go from the most dry uh, to the most sweet. These last two, I'm not necessarily sure about. They're all going to be relatively dry, um, but compared to each other, um, I'm not sure if we're going to keep escalating to get sweeter and sweeter. Um, but we'll see. This is another one of the uh, Kermit Lynch imports. Uh, these guys are very much involved in using or organic farming, although I do not do not believe that they are uh, certified as such, um, but, you know, that's really just about jumping through hoops. They're very much in, in play with using that idea. Again, they're using these native yeasts. Um, this one aged in stainless steel or oak barrels, depending on the lot, depending on the uh, vineyard that they came from. Uh, Color-wise, you know, I'm looking at the monitor and it looks significantly more gold where you're at. Um, from my angle, it's almost like a greenish uh, straw yellow. There is the that golden play, um, but it, it actually seems just a little bit uh, lighter uh, than the other ones. There's a weird little reflection going on right here. Maybe it's from the maybe it's from the bottle. Yeah, if I'm back here, it looks a little bit more clear. All right. <clears throat> Nose a little bit tighter uh, than the other ones. So for this guy here, um, it's definitely on the nose, a lot more of the petrol notes, a lot more of these uh, mineral type of characteristics. A little bit of like a, a crayon type of play, like crayon powder. Um, and again, I'm almost feeling like, uh, like, a, like opening up a cardboard box. Think about um, opening up like your big box of Crayola crayons, dumping out all the crayons, and then just smelling the empty box. So there's a little crayon dust. There's a little bit of that thin, uh, dusty, cardboardy type of thing happening. Not a whole lot of fruit. I mean, these muted green apples. By the way, that Oster tag, uh, 90 plus, right? Just keep me on task. Make sure that I'm giving you scores for all that. So 90 plus on the Oster tag, uh, 90 on the Trimbach. Let's look at this uh, Meyer uh, Fauné. Initially, this is the sweetest of the bunch, and yet, uh, again, there's that acid that comes in about, you know, halfway through, the acid starts to take over, and it, it erases um, any sense of that sweetness. So, I mean, when you, I'm first getting this, it was a lot of this, like, um, green apple core, really sweet uh, green apple core, and then there's this acid kind of rises up. It's like this tidal wave of acid crashes over the top of, let's think of it almost like applesauce, right? This acid wave crashes over the top of that applesauce, and you forget what you were eating because it almost becomes this different wine uh, halfway through, and I'm still tasting extremely long uh, acidic finish. Uh, ranking it towards the Trimbach, uh, that first one, you know, was pretty much acid the whole way through. Um, the acid that's taking over here, it's not as mouthwateringly intense, uh, as, as the Trimbach. And yet, I would say the, the Meyer Fauné, um, the acid that is there does a really good job of counterbalancing uh, that sweetness. So my guess is that it's a higher residual sugar, but also a higher acidity. And so together, they're kind of uh, mellowing each other out. Let's get into the fruits on this. I 
it's almost like, you know, timing wise, the, the moment I start to spit it out, that's when those very uh, sweet uh, and aromatic green apples start to convert over to this very acidic, um, sour apple type of play. Um, I am getting a little bit of like, you know, the, the acid and the sour notes on there almost remind me of um, those little candies, those like nuclear warheads or atomic warheads that, that I'm sure all of you guys were really into when you were younger. It was like a challenge to see who could make it to the end to get that sweetness. Those ones, those candies would do a really good job of going from powerful acid to candy-fied sweet. Uh, this one does a really good job of going from candy-fied sweetness to... Um, candy-fied acidity. And normally when I talk about um, candied aspects of wines, uh, there's a negative connotation to it. Um, this is something that I'm very much enjoying though. Um, and what's really neat is as um, the acidic finish is mellowing out, there are these herbal type of notes that are starting to show up. I mean, almost like this, like eucalyptus -y, uh, type of play. And it's very subtle, um, but intriguing and, and almost like, uh, you know what? It's like a green tea eucalyptus thing that's happening at the end. I mean, you know, oh, let me give one more sip here. Wow, this wine just really takes you for a nice ride, and, and there is like this nice saltiness um, to it as well. And at first, you know, the first sip that I took, the first like half a second, I wasn't much of a fan of this wine, but now it's becoming one of my favorites so far today. So just in the terms of like relative scoring, let's give uh, this Meyer Faunet 2011 Riesling Reserve, let's give it a 91 uh, points. I mean, definitely a, a fun um, wine. And as I continue to speak of it, um, I'm thinking about there is this nice oiliness to it too. I mean, this is just a, a gorgeous uh, wine. I really like this one a lot. And again, that was uh, 22 bucks. All of these recommended so far. All of these 90 points and up so far. This is the uh, last Riesling I have for you today. This is the uh, Domain uh, Weinbach uh, Cuvée Theo Riesling. This is 2011 and it's from the uh, Clos de uh, Capuchins. Uh, Capucines, uh, I'll post it and then somebody like Johnny Brandy will, uh, tell me, uh, how bad my pronunciation was. Um, but another, you know, big time, uh, Alsatian, uh, wine estate. These guys have been around since 1612. So again, a, a really long, and, and you can almost look at the label. You know, we talk a lot about, um, what labels mean, you know, labels that have, um, you know, bunny rabbits on it tend to sell pretty well. Um, labels with, uh, teddy bears or, or pictures of like cake, uh, seem to sell pretty well. But I'll tell you what, it's these classic, uh, type of labels here, um, that just to me come off as like, so prestigious. How could you go wrong just with like a really nice looking label like this? So the uh, Domaine Weinbach uh, Cuvée Theo 2011 Riesling. Um, let's see, it runs in at 30 bucks. I couldn't get, again, a number on the residual sugar here. It is uh, coming in at 13.5% alcohol and it is the most expensive of the, of the bunch. Again, uh, 30 bucks. And this is uh, imported by Vineyard Brands. Now again, it's like this uh, light gold 
uh, golden straw type of color right here. You know, most of these wines are pretty much in that same range. There's not that much of a difference. Um, and again, there's this weird thing because you guys are looking up and you're getting this light coming down. It might seem a lot darker uh, from your perspective than it really is. It's this uh, yellowish, greenish, gold type of straw color here, right? Really nice nose. Getting like that lychee uh, fruit. I'm getting peach and apple skin. There's that oiliness, that petrol uh, type of play. And one more thing, and maybe I'll come up with it after I start drinking it. Really, more than anything else, it's this uh, peach skin that's coming through. Um, it's not like over-the-top fruitiness, but it's definitely something that, you know, if you kind of got like a bag of peaches and just kind of stuck your nose in the back, those are the type of notes that I, uh, you would expect to get, right? They don't say how much residual sugar is in this. Um, I'm not getting the appearance of much, uh, if any, residual sugar there. This is all uh, acid from the get-go. It's long uh, acid uh, from the get-go continuing, um, and the acid really isn't changing that much. Um, this is definitely a, a different type of play. It's definitely, um, you know, I, I think some of us, if we're just getting into Rieslings, it's, uh, um, it, it might not appeal to everybody. I mean, if you're really just into um, those super sweet Rieslings, that's what you're into. You're really into uh, those German Rieslings, and there's plenty of great uh, German Rieslings there. Um, if you're into just those sweet uh, Rieslings from the United States. I don't know if you would be much of a fan of this because, um, you know, we're not getting a whole lot of these over the top fruit notes at all. Um, this really is again, acid from the get go. Now, along with that acid, let me pick out some notes here. Lemon and lime zest, right? So it's like this bitter lemon lime zest. Um, I am getting, you know, there's so much acid there. It almost gives like the sensation of there being some sort of like bubbly frizzante action. I show this wine to you and you see that there's not any uh, at all, but there really is a, a liveliness to this. Um, also, you know, as far as, you know, again, really the only fruit notes that I'm getting are like these different um, citrus zest type of notes. Um, and, and I guess you could say, um, drop a few like apple seeds and peach cores, uh, into this citrus zest, uh, concoction. And it's a lot of, um, like bitter and acidic, uh, type of notes. Um, there's a whole lot of, uh, oily petrol type of, uh, flavors in here. It's just a totally different play. It's it's kind of interesting because because to me, I think that the uh, Domaine Wienbach and the Trimbach 
that I, I jumped into at the beginning. These guys are both really great representations of um, the acidity and the dryness that can really come out of uh, all sauce. When I look at uh, the middle two, the Meyer Faunet and the Domaine Ostertag, these guys are definitely showing um, the, the acid and sweetness kind of playing with each other. Um, but if I'm comparing the Wienbach to the Trimbach, um, what I'm saying is it's almost like uh, a little bit more refined and a little bit more elegant. It's almost a, um, it's it's uh, very much like a nerdy uh, <laughs> type of Riesling, if that makes sense. Um, it's one that I really think... Um, may turn a lot of people off uh, initially, um, but I also think it's kind of like this acquired type of thing. I re remember when you first really start getting into drinking coffee. Remember when you first started getting into drinking tea? Gosh, remember when you first started getting into drinking wine? Um, I remember my first sip of wine when uh, I was like eight years old and uh, I hated it and it kept me from drinking any wine at all until I was like 22. Um, but I think once you give a wine like this a chance, and I think you definitely need to step up to a wine like this, um, I think you think it was just so different and so elegant. I mean, these, these uh, who would have thought, like, drinking a glass of watered-down uh, oil with citrus zest and peach pits... Who would have thought um, that that would be my favorite wine of the bunch? But it is. I, I This is really fun. Uh, and I, I think a lot of you guys are, are uh, once you give it a chance, I think a lot of you guys are really going to like this. At $30, um, you know, if you're just getting into Alsatian Rieslings, if you're just getting into wine in general, I would say, you know, try the, try the Trimbach, uh, or the Ostertag or, or the, or the, uh, Meyer Fonet, uh, to begin with. But once you start to really get into those guys, seek this one out. Um, this is really fun. Uh, Again, cultivated organically, uh, again, fermented on these uh, native yeasts. This is just a really nice, really, really nice Riesling. And let's just, you know, complete the circuit. I went 90, then I went 90 plus, then I went 91. This guy's going to be a, a 92 right here. Um, and if you're into Alsatian Rieslings already, um, pick this one up. It's, it's fantastic. Um, so anyways, I hope you guys really enjoyed this video going on right now on Twitter. Uh, if you look under the hashtag all sauce rocks, um, the wines of all sauce is doing a Twitter tasting, um, right now, go ahead, ask them questions. Uh, I'm going to be on there <coughs> fielding questions as well and, and, and asking a lot of questions. Um, and, and, and let us know what you think. Leave a comment below. Participate uh, in the uh, Alsace Rocks uh, on Twitter um, between 4 and 5 p.m. Pacific time uh, on Thursday, the 27th, 2013. Um, and let us know what you think about dry Alsatian Rieslings. You know how I stand. Everybody, stay rad.